So Dave, once again, thank you so much for doing this project sign. It's our third one, um, third of what's going to be many. We're just going to continue plugging along as we can do these. Um, my question for you is, to the best of your knowledge, can you kind of set up for people what we're going, like the pictures that we're going to be looking at? So I don't remember whose party this was, but uh, I, I think I went, I heard about it from Josh Stanton. He, I think he gave me a ride to the show as well. But at kind of an apartment complex, there was a uh, community room type of thing where people could have parties in there and banquets and stuff. Do you remember the and city? Went a park, maybe? Okay. It was north. It was north of uh, Huntington Beach, but like in that area. Um, and uh, yeah, it was so in that, in that room, whoever party it was, they had gotten Down by Law and Carrie Nation to play as well. And I didn't know who whose party it was, but. Which sure was a show that group. people would, I mean, even still to today, like if those two bands were playing, they they would get, I mean, people would pay to see that, yet here they were just playing. Yeah, and this was a, a semi-private party because I'm sure most of the group of friends that I had that were there, maybe a third or less knew whose party it was. And so you just ended up going... Because, okay, so you just heard about it and were like, you know, you, you know, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm it's, gonna, another, it, it's another show, let's go. <laughs> well, I am going to just jump into the pictures then. And then, and then one thing that I remember about this show is I believe, because just based on the fact that it's, it's 411, well, actually, it's, no, it's Carrie Nation. Nation with Down By Law. And one thing I remember is that there was a show that, that that they played together, and that was the show. At some point, Dan punched the ground and broke his arm because the next night he showed up at Spanky's and he was wearing a cast. Oh yeah. And that I think was. I remember that. Well, then were you at the Spanky show? You had to. I think been. I have. I think I have pictures of him in the cast. Well, the thing is, is that was also the night, the big night that him and Big Frank almost yes. got into their fight, which, I mean, I, I I just, I think everyone's glad that that just, like, it's, it's better as something of a hardcore myth, like, in terms of what it yeah. could have been, than it actually needing to actually yeah, I mean, happen. We were, we were a bunch of scrawny little lightweights. Here were two heavy, oh, not yeah. just heavyweights, but like, you know, big heavyweights yeah. that were about to throw down. It's like five of us couldn't hold one of them back, let alone a group of 20 of us trying to keep those two apart. Well, I, I remember later talking talking with Dan um, and him just telling me a story, and it's kind of another story about just Big Frank, and he was in a fight with someone, and they tried to hold his arm, and there were like four or five people. Again, you know, my, I'm sure that there's truth to this, who knows how many people it was. It, does, it doesn't really matter. What matters is Frank was strong enough to punch through everyone holding his arm to hit the person that he was trying to hit. So, yeah, you know, and exactly. And it's, yeah. So that that's what's interesting about this is people know about, oh, Dan and Big Frank almost got in a fight, but then there was the show the night before. And, I mean... I don't think we need to speculate on, well, were there things about that show that played into this? I like doing these more because your pictures capture, for so many of us, they capture a time. And also for a lot of people that weren't there, they can see, hey, this, you know, and there was a lot of people that were not at this particular show. <laughs> no, it was maybe what, like 50 people right. total? <laughs> You know, I mean, we, I think we had a crew of about 25 or so, and then there was all the friends and family of the pe people who throw in the party. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start presenting. 
And um, like I said, I'm going to edit this better when I when I do the actual thing. But are you able to see what I am showing yeah. you? Okay. Yeah, I can see the photo. So Dan is. I'm assuming that he's sitting on carpet. Yep. And yeah, because there, like, there was like a tiled section of the of the floor where the bands played, and then there was most of most of the room though was carpeted. Okay. Okay. And the rare sighting of Dan in a white shirt playing. Yes. Very well, rare. I, I, I'm at just at that time especially. I mean, maybe No For An Answer days, you might have seen him in a white shirt or something, but in after No For An Answer, or even late No For An Answer, you never saw him wearing white. And one wonders, although we can't tell the color of the shoes, are those the shoes that would ultimately be on the 411 record? They could be. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, but then again, you know, we all had multiple pairs of things sometimes, so... <laughs> Um, Sometimes, anyways. You you have people in the background, and they are you have a guy shooting with 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 an old camera. So video of the show does exist. Like we at least know and that. I would, I would be curious. You know, I I saw as I was scanning these, I don't remember ever seeing a video. So I'm curious of who that was. If they still have that video, it'd be cool to see it. Well, and, and the thing is also about this picture is also look at all the white shirts. Like the whole black shirt mm -hmm. thing for everybody hasn't really happened yet. Um, no. The clothes. I know for myself, I didn't get into the black shirt thing until after I went on a couple tours and realized it's way easier to wear a shirt multiple days when it's black and it doesn't show it's dirt <laughs> god no smart smart i kind of learned that remember i used we had all those cool shirts my aunt had worked for cool cigarettes and so it was just okay yeah i was like well this makes me having to i always remember popeye marveling and he's oh you know I, i'm i'm really envious like for you, you'll get 30 cool shirts and you'll wear that and you won't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I'm like, what's wrong with <laughs> yeah. it? Um, and also something that I think is interesting, um, the, the baggy clothes. There's not a lot of baggy clothes here. Like, like you know, you look at the guy holding the camera and his pants are... He was pretty early... I think I think most of our crew was already starting the baggy clothes at that point, mostly because of skateboarding, gotcha. more than likely. But um, it hasn't it hadn't gotten to that point um, of ridiculousness that it went to in a few years' time, where kids are you know wearing triple XLs. <laughs> well, and this also, you know what? I just realized this. I'm thinking this is like even '92. This isn't '92. This is '90. This is probably 90 or 91. Gotcha. I just remember... At 91 at the latest. I would guess 1990, sometime in 1990. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because Carrie Nation played their last show at the Country Club. And if we work backwards, if their, la if their last show was preceded by the Spanky show, which Big Frank and Dan almost got into the fight, then the f night before that show was this show. So it would have yeah. it would have put us sometime in the spring of 1990. Now, do okay. you know? Who, <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's based on my recollections too. So I might not be right, you know. Now, do you? Here's another thing: I don't recognize anyone in this picture other than Dan. In this photo, I don't remember recognizing anybody. I know there's another photo I have where basically to the right of some, of, like behind Dan against that wall, there was a few friends, I think like Doc Madrid and Randy Johnson are all um, in some of those chairs lying in the wall. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, also, what I think is interesting, well here, I'm gonna move on to the next picture because then we start getting into the fun stuff which is, um, well, you have Sterling in that Iceman Cometh shirt, which I'm sure is probably worth a fair amount of money. 
you have he's on these days yeah (laughs) he's on and that's sterling with really long hair you have scott sundahl um who had not moved to salt lake city yet um no and i just love that him and sterling are having such a good time and i can't see it yet but i'm wondering if because you have obviously the same people are still sitting on that brick uh, fire fireplace. I wonder yeah. if Sterling took the guy's camera who had been shooting, but maybe, I, I don't no, know. I think the guy is probably just out of, just being blocked by Sterling and Scott. I think he's probably still there. Gotcha, gotcha. I just, it's so interesting to me because, you know, when I met Sundahl, that was like, 88 or 89 and then this is 90 and it's and then he he kind of he was here for a little bit after that and then he moved to um to salt lake city so it's just it's just it's just interesting seeing him in these in these pictures yeah i mean one of the things because it was a like essentially a house party feel to it it was very relaxed and because the main people there to see the band were all friends, everybody just goofed off and had fun. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. That's the thing I remember most about it. The bands, as the bands were playing, everybody was just goofing off. There wasn't any serious moshing or anything. It was just like, let's be dorks. Because well, we're, we're a bunch of dorks. <laughs> and, well, and, and that's another thing is it's really interesting how that tends to happen at parties. Like, I'm not sure how it is anymore, but I just found that playing parties, they were either super duper awkward, like, like you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like you needed the yeah. darkness of a, of, a, of a club, or they were just totally fun. And, and, and people yeah. not... I think it's because it's, with a party, it's generally, you know most people there. Whereas right. a show, you're going to be amongst a couple hundred people, maybe, where you know a, 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 a very small fraction of them. So then you're less likely to be your goofy self, your full goofy self. Whereas when you know 90% of the people, you're just like, hey, we're all goofs. Let's goof off and have fun. <laughs> you have Gavin. Gavin in the trademark black black shirt. Gavin was always ahead of everyone. In terms of where yeah. thing, in terms of where things were uh, were uh, headed, um, and I'm and I'm and I'm sure that, and I could be wrong, but regardless of whether they would be on stage or playing this venue, I'm sure Gavin was playing as loud as he always played. Yeah, I'm trying to. I think he had a, a, a double stack, a full stack. Gotcha. At this show. <laughs> I think we'll see it. We'll probably see it in another shot. Okay. Okay. Well, here, you know, let's move on to this ne- next shot, which is more. Okay. So then there you have Madrid um, sitting with Randy. I think that's Randy next to him? Yeah. Randy to uh, Madrid's left. And then um, it's, it's so <laughs> interesting because. That's. Well, I, it, I think that's Pete. It was his name. I can't remember his name. His his name's escaping me. He's one of the Irvine kids. Pete Agle, which guy. would be he married Jeff Anthony's sister. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's him. Okay, so then so I think that's him anyway. Okay, so we think that we have a Pete Agle sighting on um, uh, to the left of Randy again. The baggy thing is, you know not happening really you know on anyone in this picture not to the full extent (laughs) and what i love is like the people that you know that know these guys are like look at look at madrid's face like like yeah happy happy as a clam and then if you look at the people right behind sterling not I'm just saying I'm not saying that they weren't enjoying it. They just don't seem to be having as good a time as Sterling Scott and um <laughs> Madrid and Randy and maybe even Pete. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean that's where uh I think the group of us who knew each other we were definitely goofing off and very 
less serious than the music being played whereas some of the people were just like all right look at those guys having fun but we don't know them so they're not fully partaking but still having a good time do you remember how dan reacted to that no gotcha <laughs> I, don't. I was trying to think that and i made me wonder if that shot of him on the floor in the middle was him kind of like trying to disrupt the goofiness ah so maybe sort of went out there to kind of like like they're not going to yeah they're not gonna i i could see him doing that but i could also see him just wandering out because he wanted to you know i mean he could have done it for no reason or he could have had a reason i'm not sure well it's so it's so interesting because in Carry Nation, you saw a little bit of self-deprecation. In 411, you saw a little bit more. But it's in, but like Shiner's Club, I, I remember like watching it, and it was almost like a comedy routine. Like I'm not even kidding. Like like he was very, just very self-deprecating. As you you like I saw it in Done Dying. Like it's just it's just interesting to me, kind of that evolution of you know like. I'm, you know, I'm sure he would agree with this, like, kind of not taking yourself as seriously. And you're still very serious, but yeah. just like on the stage, kind of knowing and, and also I'm sure that Dan knew at this thing, this is a party. I'm just saying, th like, I would much rather see, oh, but then again, I played in ice. So this is like comparing apples to <laughs> watermelons, but I'm saying yeah. I would much rather see what Sterling and Scott are doing than nothing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if if everybody just sat around, it would have been exceptionally boring. But um, people had fun. Yeah, and that's the one thing too is you got to enjoy life. I mean, we can all have very serious politics and ethics and everything, but we still need to enjoy life, and that's what most of us were doing that night. Actually, I just realized something. The guy behind Sterling in the hat and the black shirt, that's Dave. That's Dave, Dave Smalley. Oh, is it? Because he's wearing a Down by Law shirt. And then I'm just looking at his face. I'm like, that's Dave. That's got to be. That's okay. got. And the thing is, you know what? We will continue this detective work when we get to the Down by Law pictures because he's wearing that, he that shirt. Because he is wearing a Down by Law shirt. Yeah. yeah, look at us. Look at us. We're putting this together. <laughs> Okay, because, well, what I also, what I was going to say I also found interesting was Pete, the guy to the left of Randy, looks identical, sort of, to the guy behind Sterling. That's what made me look at the guy behind Sterling more and realize, oh, wait, that's Dave. Oh, okay. All right, okay, we're going to move into picture number four, which now we get, oh, look at this. Now we're getting it down by law, and... Wearing, wearing that, wearing that, um, actually, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's go back super duper quick. Yeah. Because I think there's a few more Carry Nation photos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There are. There are. I have yeah. them all. I have them all. We're, we're, and you know what? Should we do that? You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. We're going to go to, we're going to go back to Carry, Carry Nation here. So then we'll go to the shot of the band. So you, yeah. have, so you have Frank, who still had the brace on from when he jumped off the the riser, the drum riser at the country club, and then remember, like he's standing, and then his 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 left knee gave out. That's on video. That's on a video that Nelson has. Oh wow, I actually have only a vague recollection of that, mostly because as you were telling me, I was like, oh, I kind of remember that, but. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. And, you, and, be, and you, here you can see the, the tiled floor that the band is playing on, and which needed Sean Higgins to hold uh, Larson's bass, uh, bass drum. I wonder, I wonder what that number one felt like for Sean, and then I wonder what that sounded like. It's loud. There was a, a, a 411 show in San Diego and Mario's uh, kit was sliding away from him. And Dan looked around, grabbed me, and sat me in front of the, the kick drum. And that's where I s stayed for the rest of it. And it's like, you just feel, you feel the, 
the you know every time he's using it not like in a harsh way but uh and it's just very loud because you hear you're so close to the drums you have the guitars on both sides of you and it, but, but it's also kind of a very interesting view to watch a show is it and is i'm assuming a vibration too because the thing is against your back right yeah yeah you can you can feel every 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 uh use of the kick drum so that's sean higgins the drummer of trigger man um making sure that larson's drums don't move you have big frank wearing the nemesis shirt which i loved and then yep. if, if you look really close he has the carry nation dog tag yeah and then going deeper back into the picture just as you said the two marshals so they're playing that place and gavin <laughs> still showed up with a full stack full stack yeah <laughs> wow i'm sure the neighbors were i'm sure the neighbors were very pleased <laughs> and then there's his tuner at the top of that i always remembered that it had sort of the lights that kind of yeah it looked, it, i always thought those looked like cylons right from, right right from that one show Battlestar galactica the old one i don't know if they kept that when they remade it but gotcha oh yeah in the uh in the uh reboot and then i always loved gavin's um like the way that the no for an answer stuff was painted onto his gear like i just thought that yeah, look I, I always thought that was super cool it just added such a um such a cool element to his stuff yeah like like even looking at it now like you look at it on dan's shirt you look at it on that logo like so much of gavin's stuff holds up in the sense of you look at it and you don't go like oh wow that was gavin in the early days of his of his art it's it's like no like i mean it was early but you know it he it it, it still looks as good to me yeah it's it still looks cool definitely definitely yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look dated yeah like i said it doesn't look dated at all he he just he he had style he knew what he was doing right yeah no right 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 and still does still does like he's still making art yeah. and doing all that the, those the paintings he posts are amazing i love them <laughs> so here from if, if i had money i'd probably try to buy one <laughs> so we here from this we'll go to this other carry nation so this is the last carry nation picture and okay the first thing i want to point out is I don't know where this was in the set. Oh, wow. Frank's wearing two knee braces. They are doing that on half carpet, half tile. Yes. I don't know what exactly started it. I mean, obviously somebody fell and dog pile ensued. Yeah, no, it's, it's just crazy. And what's funny is at this point, <laughs> Sterling's out of it. Like he's in the very back. Yeah. Um, surprisingly <laughs> yeah but considering the other photos anyway like this would this would hurt okay this picture I'm okay imagine this current picture that we're looking at happening in 2023 with the same people <laughs> oh, oh people would be hurt yeah like that's <laughs> painful yeah oh man and I just once again <clears throat> I'm really um I'm really just marveling at the amount of white shirts. Like I think that and, was and just light light colored clothes in general. I, I I really think, and I could be wrong, that maybe some of that's sort of a of, of a holdover from like the late eighties. Just sort of oh, yeah, a definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And then yeah. Although I'm sure that, you know, no for an answer. I mean I'm just saying look at Frank, he's in black like, you know, he's 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 dressed as Frank, you. Frank, Frank was a bit like Gavin ahead of the, ahead of his time, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, Frank was skating with the Z Boys and Dogtown in the early their early days, and you know he then worked all the early great Golden Boy shows. You know, the dude was, you know, been around forever. <laughs> he knew his shit, so he was he was always a step ahead of most of us. Definitely, definitely. And look at his and look at his hat. He's wearing the Carry Nation hat. Yep. Yeah. He was really proud of that band. I, I always, I always loved that, and he was always super cool with me. I still have the poster that he gave me, um, and uh, he gave me a T-shirt as well. 
Uh, I think I gave that to my friend Justin out in Philly. I remember but, years, yeah. years ago, like it was like almost right after they broke up, I was working at a, at a place in Orange County called Flaky Jake's. I don't know if you've ever heard of that place. It was a burger no. restaurant. A guy showed up and was ordering and was wearing a Carrie Nation shirt. But completely, I, I, I tried talking to him about it. And he was like, oh, I just got it. Like I worked one of the shows that they played. But had no... Oh, okay. wow. Yeah, it was no, no, wow, no connection. That's like, kind of cool. Yeah, I'm looking to see if we can see someone. Looks like they're covering their face. <laughs> um, in that, in that, in that picture, and I always love the people on the periphery because I don't know if the way that guy's standing, he's trying to. Oh no, is that Pat? No, I don't know who that is. Okay, because I was going to say, I don't know if they're trying to get involved or if they're... They right, right, right. <laughs> or if they're, yeah, exactly, exactly. If they're trying to, if they're trying to help the situation. Yeah. And then... I just love that Frank decided to go in on it. <laughs> look at how happy he is. Exactly. That's that kind of, that shows you how much fun was being had by everyone. You have someone wearing what looks like argyle pants, which I know were big at that at that time. That might have been Pete Engel. Didn't he? he might have, that might have been him. Okay. Okay. Maybe. I, I'm just guessing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hmm. All right. We're going to go to the Frank picture above this. Oh, that's just a good shot. That's just yeah. a really... Like, that captures him to me. Like, look at his face, his eyes. A warm guy, but a guy with a presence. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Just He's a, a good dude. Yeah, uh, yeah, just a super sweetheart of a guy. Oh, look, and you even see on the base, there's a Carrie Nation sticker. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's just, it's, yeah. Yeah, he, um, he was sort of like all of our dads you know like like oh, at least definitely. at he, least he it shows he looked out for us he, he he made sure we were good he made he made sure we were clued in on good records and good bands coming out and yeah he was he was awesome but at the same time you look at him and as and as warm and fuzzy as he may look in this picture just you know you knew not to mess with him <laughs> yeah yeah i mean he he had a size and a presence that, um, if you didn't know him, could be quite intimidating. So I'm assuming... And even, even when you did know him, it was a bit intimidating. <laughs> but exactly. Well, the, you 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 knew, the hell, like, hey, we're cool, but at the same time, like, I don't want to think that we're so cool that I can mess around with him the, my, the way I might mess around with someone else. Yeah, True. You have okay, so I'm assuming this is in between songs because in the background, I you, think so. It looks like Gavin is looking at Steve, and Steve looks like he's looking at Dan. Yeah. And Big Frank looks like, and I would do the same thing. Like he's trying not to ring out. Oh yeah, he's um, yeah. This had to have been between songs, and it makes me wonder what was going on <laughs> because did he ask me to take a photo or and then look away at the crowd or was he saying something and I just I don't know what led me to snap this photo well and and that's also a really good point like we don't know what's happening outside of the frame did someone come in and say hey you guys have to be done in 10, 10 minutes or yeah. like you know whatever the case was like we just don't know that's what i like about doing this with you is it's is i mean the pictures the minute you snap them they're just they're they're a moment in time and we'll never really you know we'll never really know yeah unless of course I mean, a frank remembers Sometimes you remember what was going on, but not me. Right. <laughs> not me and my horrible memory. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're doing fine. You are doing fine. Okay, let's go down. By the way, I always loved that Larson played a white kid. 
Didn't he have a yellow kit too, though? The yellow kit, wasn't that the kit that I bought off of Kevin? Uh, oh, yeah, maybe it was Kevin's kit I'm thinking of then. Because I remember I bought that. Here, okay, here's an interesting thing. I don't think I've ever told this to anybody. So, <laughs> Kevin had that kit, and somehow it got back to him that I was looking for a drum set. And my reasoning for looking for a drum set was for Popeye, because Popeye wanted Popeye was going to be in Ice because I knew Popeye really liked playing drums, and I knew that between Ice and Farside, Popeye liked Ice not more, but Popeye liked the fact that he didn't have to care about being in Ice. Like he showed up, and it was sorty. It was like done for him in terms of here's a drum set, there's food, there's there's a place to pro like you 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 don't have to do anything but just show up. And I know that Popeye yeah. really really liked that. And so I wanted yeah, to have... A, just have to show up, play, and have fun. Not like, okay, let me write this song. Let me let me get lyrics for it now and all that other stuff. Let me, let me... Oh, wait, oh, wait. We're going to be playing a show. Okay, um, well, then I have to figure out, can the other guys play? Like, like there was none of that for him. Yeah. Um, but, but the thing is, is that for the longest time, we borrowed Mario's red kit. And it was at my parents' house... The whole summer of 1992. And it was, it was there so long, and Popeye was playing it, I kept thinking, oh man, uh, he's just going to, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if he let us just keep this? Well, then one night, Kevin called me, hey, Mario called me, he wants his drums. No problem. So then, I had heard about Kevin wanting to get rid of his set, and I was like, sure, Okay, um, I'll buy him because I wanted to have one for Popeye. I didn't ex really think Kevin was going to follow up. And then one morning he called me and was like, hey, do you want to buy my drums? It's 150 bucks." And I was like, like, I was going to buy them anyway. I knew that we needed them. But like at that time, I, I was still like, wow, like I can't believe that like the people from 411 and Farside are my friends and blah, 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 blah. So yeah. I it was actually 120. I somehow got 120 bucks. Met him in Tustin, past a place that I would end up driving by almost every day for the for 15 years. Um, it was at the I, I want to say the second Fat House, and and it was on Newport Boulevard. And he and I met and we bought him. So that's that nice. long winded cool. yellow <laughs> kid story. Um, I also That's remember. That's funny. I, I, I never put that together that those drums were his old drums. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he, and then. That's, that's cool. And then Mario almost ended up borrowing them from me in like a year or two later when four one one was going to do a um, reunion. Dan called me and said, "Can oh, we okay. borrow your drums?" I was like, "Of course, of course." And then yeah. it ended up just not happening. Um, do you still have those drums? Oh God, I wish. God, I wish. I don't remember what happened to them. But God, oh, I wish. Oh, because I, I mean, right now, what I use for drums, I just have like a drum pad with like plastic pedals and I plug into my computer. But I'm saying, come on, nothing beats yeah. the kit. And another thing was, it was just a great way to learn. Like, I learned, yeah, totally. I learned like, like, how to like put the stuff together. I learned, oh, the snare. I learned how to make it tight. Like, and I actually learned how to play the drums just by virtue of the fact that they were in my, in my house. By the way, in this picture, I did not know until you pointed out to me that that was Pat Delaney. Yeah, that's Pat Delaney. And then there's Doc and then right behind them is uh, Randy Johnson. Okay. And then we can see the guy filming again. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back to that angle. Um, so Pat went to, did he go to Modern Day? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. When, and so Pat was an Irvine not, guy. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and Doc was too. Well, yeah, because Doc worked at Campus Gas. Yeah. Okay. And then you have Randy. See, and that's the thing is this, this is what I wonder. Where are we in the set? Are we early? Something tells me that we're later in the set. And I only say that because when it first starts up, nobody wants to be the first people to be doing anything. Yeah, you know what? Let me go grab the negatives 
because then I could look at the numbers and see in what sequence we're at. Okay. So you're looking at the negative. You're cross-referencing your, your, your work. Here's the negative. So, um, yeah, I, and I basically scanned them in reverse order if they were in which they were taken. The picture of uh, Sterling on Scott Sundahl's shoulders was the very first picture I took that night. Okay. The second picture was the picture of the entire band where Sean Hag you can see Sean Higgins. The third picture was Dan in the middle of the floor. Then followed by Sterling pushing um, Scott in the chair. And then the dog pile photo. And then this photo here with Pat, Doc, and Randy. And then the last photo of Carrie Nation that I took that night is the picture of Frank. Gotcha. Okay, the one with Frank holding the bass, like, so as to, yeah. we're assuming, not not ring out. Yeah, so that's probably right at, right before they stopped playing. They were probably, like, right before last song. You know, I'm trying to make out what it says on Doc's shirt in this in this picture, and I can't. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. It's, once again, I'm just, I'm so amazed, like, like, because it would literally a few years would pass. Randy, and if you look at it in like kind of the foreground of the picture, is already kind of doing the baggy thing. Kind yeah. of. But even... It was, uh, th at that point, too, I mean, that's when uh, Randy was a really good skateboarder. So those of us who skated were probably doing the slightly baggier stuff already. Or skated on a uh, very regular basis doing the... And the baggy stuff related to skating is for kind of more just agility and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, because uh, clothes at the time were, if they were kind of tightish, they, they restricted your movement. So the slightly baggier just allowed you to uh, still move freely. But yeah, this is, I like Doc's bleached mohawk thing going on. Yeah, I know. He looks great. I, I, I need to send him this picture because his son is getting into this music now. And I just think it'd be really cool if he could see, like, Dad, you know, because what, Doc is may, <laughs> maybe 20, 21? Yeah, so if this was 90, I was 19. So, we're, yeah, we're all, like, 19, 20, 21 or something like that. And there's Dan right behind Pat singing his brains out. It, and that's the, the very Dan pose that he, I'm sure he still does. Right. No, definitely. 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 So then here, then. So we have this. We've looked at that. So then right now we did all the Carry Nation pictures then. Yeah. So, so right All now, all those pictures that we've done so far are during Carry Nation. So yeah, that picture of Down by Law. Yeah. Why don't we move into Down by Law and we'll go, and we'll and we'll go there. So that is Dave, and then the guy behind him. I never knew how to say his name. Is I'm assuming that's Chris Bagarazzi, I think. Oh, I have no idea. I do. I still have that first album. And I'm wondering, and I'm, I'm assuming, because I would be Dave Nasworthy on drums, and I always loved that guitar that Dave was playing, because Ian played the similar one, the, um, oh gosh, it's the Gibson, no, hold on, it's failing me, it's failing uh, me. I, I do have the first album still. Yeah, 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 so can you... Pronounce the guy's yeah. name better than me. Bagarazzi. Okay, yeah. good. I was close. Yeah, you were way close. I... So I'm, yeah, I'm going to do something. On face. Yeah. Dave Nass, drums. Dave Smalley. Chris Bagarazzi. Yeah. So yeah, the Gibson SG. It was. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, and I mean, that's obviously a different one than the one that Ian played. But I just, I always... Those were pretty classic guitars, though. I mean, I think, um, if I remember right, 
Tim from Amenity played an SG. There's just that sound. I mean, that's that hollowed. Oh, no, not hollowed. It's the it's the solid oh, body sound of that. They they sound am- they sound amazingly yeah. powerful. And then yeah. if you look, there's I'm assuming that 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 because down because down by law was Dave and the guys from the Chemical People to start, and then I'm assuming that guy. I'm assuming that Bagarazzi is playing a um full full stack as well yeah and i think dave's going out of that little white amp gotcha behind. trying to see if i can read well and also you look at like dave's look those jeans are very much of their of their time kind of that stone washed look yeah the very very worn uh almost white the blue jeans faded to white almost from so much use. And then you don't see white shoes as much being being worn as much anymore, at least in hardcore. I mean, don't get me yeah. wrong, I'm sure that they're worn, but I'm saying because we saw white shoes in the uh, in the other pictures as well. Yeah. I was always just amazed. Like, like these guys were just like musicians like I like like even still like like I I just I'm just very in, in awe of of what especially just um Dave Dave Nasworthy like just just a really really good drummer and what's interesting about the chemical people is I would see them for the first time in 87 when I went on the Wally George show with <laughs> With like my brother and all these friends from high school, my dad was there, and we and we went and we were in the audience, and they were interviewing the uh, chemical people, and so it was just oh, interesting. Awesome. Yeah, oh, dude. And then later to like be playing show or or like be at shows. I remember because I first saw them at the country club when they were playing with the dwarves, and I remember okay. I saw, I saw um, Ed the bass player, and I was like, oh, like. I saw you on Wally George. He's oh yeah, that's great. But have you ever seen us play? And I was all no. And but <laughs> yeah, that's just now. I, I I just I really like Down by Law, and I only saw them a few times. And I just I'm so envious that you were like that's such an intimate show. Yeah, I, I you know I'm trying to think if I have any other photos of them, and I I'm, I can't recall anymore. Other yeah. than these shows, this might have been. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw them at other shows, but uh, this might have been the the only time I took photos of them. I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, that the bottle down there is a tea of some sort or water. But I'm just saying, I think it's just a water bottle. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was just thinking tea, just because of the voice, because you know Dave playing guitar and singing. Yeah. True. But may you know you're probably you're probably right. I wish I could. Oh, and then there's all which there was there was that connection between all because the Chemical People were on Cruise Records. All was on Cruise Records and Cruise. Yeah, and I think they toured. I think they did a whole tour together. I think I have a flyer in my collection of all and Chemical People playing a, a whole tour together. And then I think there was a record of alls where they thanked specifically the Nasworthies. They they were like, but above all, we thank the Nasworthies. And I I just yeah again again because correct me if I'm wrong. Cruz was the like the sub. It was like a subsidiary of SST. I think so. Okay. I have a vague recollection of that being the case. But it, you know we could be wrong, but that it seems, it seemed like that those were the same crowd of people essentially. You know the same group of magicians that maybe weren't part of the early SST, but were the like the later SST and the SSTs branching out and they did Cruise, which got the other other bands. Kind of like the poppier, like, more because to me, so much of the stuff on Cruise could have been on on a major label. In 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 my in my opinion, I I, I like yeah. es- especially all those first. I mean, all, almost all of all 
But like I, I just especially those first two records in which Dave was singing, I just I just was like I don't know. I, I, I was like I have a lot of affection for those for those records. I just think that they're just so good and yeah. Um all right, so we have that in here. I'll go to the second down by law, which okay, if I had to put my money on this, the song I think they're playing in this picture is a Dag Nasty song. And I only say that because Dave's not playing guitar. And not that he wouldn't it play could, guitar, but... It could be because this is the second to last shot that I took. Gotcha. And, so and, if they were if they were going to play a Dag Nasty song, I, I could see them playing it last. Everybody gets involved. He puts the guitar down. Yeah, I could... I, you're probably right. And then you look at... You see Aaron Silberman... Um, in the like lower left, I'm assuming that's Aaron. It looks like him with a uh, camera. I think he's he's there, and I think that's Will Heflin next to him. Okay, okay, and then it's and then there's a bunch of people I don't recognize, but look like they would be you know maybe with the Chemical People, but I could be wrong. It's yeah. just it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's a host of host of people right there behind the uh the guitar player that you're just like i don't i mean i don't remember them being there until i scanned this photo and then and then look at the look at the drums they're on a carpet yeah so yeah that's uh that's um interesting they came prepared. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly thank you that was exactly what i was <laughs> gonna say and um, but what I also love about this is from Dan to Dave, they're playing a party, small, intimate thing. The Dave looks. If you isolate that picture, that could be DYS. That could be. Can I say that could be any number of albums? Like he's giving a hundred and fifty percent, regardless of yeah. the room. And the same with Dan in those in those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's. I mean, that's one of the great things uh, that I love about punk rock is that, you know, you put 100% of yourself into it and express in your expression, whether it be in a packed club or a garage or a rec room or wherever the case may be, you just, you go 100%. And the shirt that, that Bagarazzi's wearing I want to well, say it's a chemical people shirt. Okay. Or is it uh, Horace Pinker? See, it looks like RoboCop. It looks like RoboCop well, to Robocop. me. <laughs> but but it could be. Yeah. I mean, I might be totally wrong. I might be totally wrong. But that really is like a good shot of Dave. Like 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 that's like a that's the classic Smalley scream. Yeah. So wait, if that's Will Heflin, is Will on the to the left of Aaron Silberman? Yeah, he's the guy with like the sweater over his shoulders. And was Will he's a got skater? A in his hand. Because I remember Will, but was Will a skater? Yes. Okay, because yeah, him and I used to skate all the time. Baggy, once again, the baggy clothes, and he yeah. has the fanny pack. If we lift up yeah, the shirt we, we all, a little I bit, mean, does does it say Vision on the fanny pack? It probably does, because we all had Vision fanny packs at some point. I just I love this detective work that we're I mean even though you know who knows it's a lot of it's conjecture but I'm saying I just love the breaking down of the pictures I love that Sundahl is in front of Dave just having a great time yep yeah okay here let's go to the next picture I think I think I'm standing that fire pit that was the fireplace in the background. I think I'm standing. I have to be standing on it because I'm above everybody else. You're right. No, so that's was, a good call. I, I I had to have walked over to that spot and stood on that fireplace. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Wow. Okay. Okay. Here, so we have so we so we did those two down by law shots. We've done all those up there, and then. Um, Is oh, there one more. Yeah. That oh, yeah. One. That's a great shot. That's so there's a, another, and that's that's from got to be the same song because it's the very next picture on the on the roll, and it like you said, it's that classic Dave Smalley 
bows, the way he sings. He's got his sleeve pulled up. You can see the, the, the X tattoo and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the True Till. I think that's the True Till. I think that's true the till, famous yeah. True True Till Death tattoo. And you have a picture with it. I'm just saying that's cool. That's cool. And then I'm assuming... Yeah in the far back whoever's there that that's an x on their shirt you know because i'm saying a lot of the people in this picture at that time you know the straight edge was you know a big thing at that at that at that time for them yeah, at that point a lot of us were still a lot of our crew was still straight edge yeah they hadn't gotten into the craft beer thing they are into <laughs> now <laughs> Yeah. yeah. See, see, see now, we'll see now, people go to places that look like this, but it's a totally different uh, experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see Will Heflin t about to take a picture in the background. This one. Yeah. No. Totally. Totally. Wow. Okay. And then, okay, someone, and um, I don't know if it's male or female, is <laughs> either laying on their side, or they've been taken <laughs> down. Because all I'm seeing are yeah. feet and parts of legs. Yeah, I don't know what's going on at that point. But Dave, I got to tell you, man, thank you for doing this, dude. We took down 10 of your pictures uh, in the process of doing this. Yeah. This was... One this, from one show, too. <laughs> <laughs> this was awesome. 